Hey y'all! Welcome back to my kitchen. So, in today's video, I'm going to be doing another cooking while quarantined. This will be my third video of the cooking while quarantined. So this cooking video is going to be just a little bit different than the ones I usually do. These are going to be some Gypsy Family recipes and I'm really excited because I'm also gonna be teaching you how to make Gypsy fried bread. Okay, so let's get started. So the first recipe I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video is this amazing creamy jalapeno chip dip. It is so easy to make and it is addictive. All you need is some cilantro, some limes, some sour cream, jalapeno, mayonnaise, and a packet of ranch dip mix. So the first thing I'm doing here is slicing open my jalapenos and I am getting rid of all of those seeds and then I am going to chop up the jalapenos and I'm not chopping them up really small because I'm actually going to throw these in my blender. So chop up your jalapeno and then get some cilantros. I didn't measure or like count up how much cilantros I used and I actually ended up adding a little bit more after. So just use as much as you like. So I blended the jalapeno and the cilantros in my blender and now I'm going to add the sour cream and the mayonnaise. All you're gonna need is one cup of sour cream and one cup of mayonnaise. Add it to your blender. You can also add more or less of the jalapeno if you don't want it super spicy. And squeeze some lime juice in. Then you're gonna add your packet of the ranch dip seasoning. <laughs> and then you put it in a Tupperware, close the lid and put it in your ice box for a little bit just to thicken and chill. Serve with tortilla chips and thank me later. Okay, so next up we are making chicken fajitas to go along with our tortilla chips and dip. And I'm just cutting all my stuff up, getting it ready so I can cook my fajitas. We got some limes and cilantros to go on top and then I'm also going to be cutting up my bell pepper and onion. We are using these corn tortillas and we're also topping off our fajitas with this queso fresco, which is a crumble cheese and it's one of my favorites. 
For the fajita meat, I'm just using this pre-seasoned pack of chicken fajita meat from Kroger. So I'm just going to put a little oil in my pan and then I'm going to throw the chicken meat right in there. I'm going to let it cook for a little bit and then we're going to add the bell peppers and the onions and some extra seasoning like salt and pepper, garlic powder and onion powder. So now I'm just putting a little butter in my pan and then I'm going to throw my tortillas right in there and warm them up. So now I'm just showing you all my little fixins and my chicken, tortillas, everything is ready to be eaten and girl trust me, it was delicious. So the next day I ended up making this pico de gallo because I had some leftover creamy jalapeno dip and we had more chips left so I made some pico de gallo to enjoy along with the creamy jalapeno dip. This is so easy to make. You just dice up some tomatoes, you cut up some jalapeno pepper, some red onion, and then all you need is to mix it all together, squeeze in some lime juice as much as you want, add a little bit of sugar, and you're good to go.
So for tonight's meal, we are making pork chops out on the grill and I'm also making my Aunt Lizzie's hot rice. But first, I'm going to make a rub for the pork chops. I just used salt and pepper, paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, turmeric, and cayenne pepper. And pretty much, I just mixed it all together in a bowl and then I rubbed it all over the pork chops. And yes, maybe I did put a little bit too much on the pork chops, but they still turned out delicious. And Alan cooked them out on the charcoal grill. Okay, so now I'm gonna make Aunt Lizzie's rice. You're gonna need some white rice. You're also going to need some bacon, jalapeno peppers, tomato sauce, butter, cayenne pepper, salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and you're also going to need some celery, some minced garlic, bell pepper, and onion. This rice is delicious and it's so easy to make. All you do is dice up your onions, dice up your jalapeno pepper and your bell pepper. And you also chop up your bacon. I actually used my kitchen scissors, which you'll see in a little bit. It's just so much easier for me to do and you should totally try it and thank me later. After you get done cutting up all of your vegetables, just go ahead and throw that bacon right in a pan or a pot. Um, fry together the bacon, the chopped bell pepper, the onion, the celery, and the garlic, and the jalapeno pepper, and the butter. And then once that's done cooking, you add that tomato sauce, add a little bit of sugar, don't forget. And then you add in the cooked rice and then season it with salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder. And then you do the cayenne pepper to taste. Now if you want it super spicy, uh, go ahead and add extra. I personally wouldn't because girl, heartburn, mm -mm. But uh, yeah, it's so easy to make and it's delicious. So yeah, here I am taking my bacon and I'm cutting it up with them scissors. I mean, listen, if you want to throw that bacon down on a cutting board and you want to use a knife, girl, that's your business. You can go ahead and do that. But trust me when I tell you, kitchen scissors is the way to go. You can even cut up vegetables. You can do all kinds of stuff with these things.
So like I said, you just put your bacon in the pot, throw in your vegetables, cook it up a little bit, season it a little bit. Once that's done, go ahead and add in that tomato sauce and your sugar, all your seasonings. Cook that for a few minutes and then add in that rice, mix it all together. Cayenne to taste and mwah, delicious. So yeah, that's how you make my Aunt Lizzie's hot rice. We also had Mama Daisy's salad and the pork chops. Next up, we are making hamburger patties with white rice, onion gravy, sauteed onions, and my granny's stewed tomatoes. So I'm chopping up my onion now so that I can saute them, but I also diced up the onion just a little bit and I threw that into my hamburger mixture. For the hamburger patties, all you need is hamburger meat, all your seasonings, which is salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasonings, and some Italian breadcrumbs, an egg, and some Worcestershire sauce. And like I said, I also threw in some diced onions just for fun. And basically, you just mix this all together, and if it starts looking too wet, then you want to add the breadcrumbs. You don't want it to be too dry or too wet. You've got to find like a perfect balance, which is easy to do because you just keep adding a little bit at a time until it looks like the perfect texture, I guess. And then you just form the patties.
So the first thing I'm gonna do here is put a little bit of oil in my pan and I'm gonna throw in the onion slivers. I'm gonna saute these till they're done. Then I'm gonna take them out of the pan and set them to the side and then I'm gonna put in my hamburger patties. And then we're gonna add in those onions once the hamburger patties are done. So now I'm gonna get my gravy ready and I'm literally just using a packet of onion gravy. And this stuff was delicious and it paired perfectly with the sauteed onions on top of those burgers. While all that other stuff is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get my tomatoes ready for the stewed tomatoes. All you're gonna need is a can of whole tomatoes. Pour them in your pot, and what I like to do is take my fork and smash the tomatoes to death uh, because I wanna get all the juices out. And I don't really want them whole. Um, I just, yeah, just smash them, kinda break them up with your fork, get the juices flowing. Um, and then I'm gonna add three teaspoons of sugar Add a little bit of salt and pepper and a little bit of butter, which I don't think I did on camera. And you're gonna let that cook for a little bit. And right when you're about to serve them, you're gonna add in the bread, which I'll show you um, in a few minutes, because this is the type of thing that you wanna serve immediately because the bread does get soggy and you don't want it to be too soggy. So I put my onions back in the pan with my hamburger patties and now I'm gonna pour some of that onion gravy over top of the hamburger patties and the onions. But I didn't pour all of it because I wanted to save some of it just for extra like on my burger and because I wanted some of it on my white rice. So I took out some of the tomatoes because Alan didn't want the stewed tomatoes, but he did like the tomatoes and wanted it to go on top of his rice. So yeah, he had a side of tomatoes on top of his rice, but for me, I had the stewed tomatoes. And all you do is take like three uh, slices of white bread and tear it all up, rip it apart, throw it right in your tomatoes, mix it together and make sure that the bread is totally covered in the tomatoes and the juices. And that's literally it.
So I wanted to tell you guys something really quick before I get started on the Gypsy Fried Bread. Every Gypsy family makes their fried bread differently, but I'm gonna be sharing with you my family's recipe and their techniques. So it literally only takes two ingredients. We're gonna be using self-rising flour and buttermilk. So like I said, everyone makes their gypsy fried bread differently, but this is just my family's recipe. So what you're gonna need is one cup of self-rising flour, and then I poured in a half a cup of buttermilk. And I just stirred it around and tried to get the right consistency, and then um, I poured just a little bit more buttermilk and stirred it until I felt like it was the perfect dough. Y'all know I am terrible with measurements, um, but if you just pour a little bit at a time and mix it, you're just gonna want it to form into like a bread dough, but it's kind of a little sticky at the same time. And don't forget to have a little bit of flour on the side for dusting. So after I got done mixing my dough, I went ahead and poured some olive oil into my pan and you wanna make sure you have enough olive oil in there. You can see what I did in mine. And then you wanna heat that oil up before you start making the bread. You can use olive oil, you can use um, canola oil, whatever kind of oil you got, try it out, but I'm using olive oil. So after I mixed it up really good with my fork, I went ahead and kneaded it just a little bit with my hands. And I'm tearing it apart right now to kind of show you guys the consistency. It's thick, it's a little stretchy, and very doughy. So you can eat this fried bread on its own, or you can add a little bit of butter, or you can eat it the way I like it. I love to cover mine in butter, and then I smother it in honey. And that's the sweet way of eating it. Or you can eat it with jams and jellies, syrups, whatever you're into. Or I also like to make this little mixture of Italian seasonings, uh, salt and pepper, and olive oil. Mix it all together and then you can dip that buttered bread right into that. It is absolutely delicious. But my favorite way is with butter and honey. Oh, and I also added a little bit of garlic powder into that olive oil mixture. Okay, so once your oil is hot and ready, you can actually just drop this into the pan with your spoon, or you can make a little dough ball with your hands and just flatten it a little bit and then drop it in there. You can do it either way. Once you get the dough in the pan, flatten it a little bit with a spoon or a fork, and then keep a good eye on it, cook it on like low medium heat, and when it starts to turn golden, then you're gonna flip it and smash it, either with a spatula or a fork like I'm doing. They don't take that long to cook, so keep an eye on it and just flip it a few times till it's golden. Um, on each side and then take it out of the pan, put it on a plate.
So I took the first batch out and then I made a second batch because I had leftover dough. But right now I'm just spreading the butter all over the fried bread so it can melt. Oh my gosh, I love putting tons of butter on there. But anyway, so here's my second batch. As you can see, I'm just flipping it as it's turning golden and then I'm smashing it down with my fork. And that's really all there is to it. Like I said, you can eat it uh, with honey and butter or you can eat it uh, with the olive oil mixture or you can just eat it with butter or by itself. It's delicious and it is filling. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the recipes that I shared with you. If you try out any of them, let me know. I would love to hear from you and I would love to hear your thoughts on these recipes, especially the gypsy fried bread recipe. Also later that night after making the gypsy fried bread, we also made a gypsy pizza, but I didn't get to film any of it because I ended up running out of memory on my memory card, but this is what it looked like and it was so good. Oh my gosh. If you guys want to know how I made this, let me know in the comments down below and I will share that recipe also with you. Now I know I said this video was ending, but I totally forgot that I recorded my breakfast. <laughs> so um, pretty much I just put some bacon in the frying pan, put a little pepper on top, mixed up my eggs with some salt and pepper, threw my bacon in that pan, and then once my bacon was done, I just threw the eggs right in the same pan with that bacon and mixed it all together. I was actually making um, some breakfast tacos, which turned out so good. Um, so yeah, I'm just salt and peppering my eggs. I'm putting a little butter and a little salt in my frying pan for my corn tortillas. And as you can see here, I just threw the eggs right in with the bacon. Mix it all together. I added a little bit of cilantro in there. And then once everything was done, I put my bacon and eggs in my corn tortilla. I put a little bit of that crumbled cheese and then we topped it off with Tabasco sauce and it was absolutely delicious. So now I'm officially ending this video and I seriously hope you guys enjoy this. I will see you next time. Bye.